Welcome back, everybody, to another League of Inches podcast episode. This one is the one that's been in demand by a lot of you out there, so we are delivering. Uh, it's the Supercoach League of Inches inaugural draft, and uh, you can see on the screen already, we, we have it sharing uh, all the teams, that what's happened, the thoughts behind it, which pretty much wasn't much, we had a 90-second timer, and um, a few boys had a few drinks under the belt. I rushed back from Ipswich from the footy. Uh, there was a lot of things going on, but we got there in the end. There was going to be a video that we uploaded for this, and we just I decided once the video had recorded and the content that was going to get produced to you guys, it was better off to not be released. It was absolute garbage. Um, great for all of us involved at the time. We thought it was fantastic. We th- there's going to be a little things clipped up from it and used just as like a, a highlight side of the video, but the majority of it, guys, it was about two hours of just pure dog shit, which you'll pretty much get most weeks from me <laughs> and Jesse, but just <laughs> it was just a bit more on the extreme. But boys, this is it. Um, first of all, you got we've got our names there, so I'm obviously inch at a time. Uh, we've got Jesse as that's full up. Uh, <laughs> and then we've got oh, Shane there as the, the Sydney snuggle bugs as well. Mm. So are we quickly just before we get right into it, happy with the the end result of the draft? Yep. I'm stoked. My team's fantastic. So we'll get into that anyway. But um no, no, I was very happy with it, obviously. Third pick, you know, you, you sort of have to pick a pretty decent team, but you both are towards the back end. Um, mm. eight and eleventh. So, yeah, this, what are your thoughts? This is the order as well, isn't it? We're, we've got it so it's That's actually the order exactly the as draft, it is. So. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. For me, there was there was parts I was happy with, and then there was parts where I was like, I think I've lost my way here. Um, yeah. I, I I made a uh, made a few made a few picks where I was just doing them to spite Jesse, like Karaz. <laughs> um, so yeah, yeah. we. I, I, I'd done a draft the day before as Jesse had done, and um, I think I kind of took a few like liberties with this one, and I was like, I'll change it up a little bit. And then in hindsight, I was like, oh, maybe I shouldn't have. But uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now I'm I'm pretty much in the same boat. There's look, it it looks. We will get into the the picks. I'm not going to actually talk too much about it, but there was a couple that I sort of looked back on, and I, I wish I kind of did. The opposite, uh, or, or went a different direction, but that is the the joy of drafts, isn't it? We all, all look back and just go, oh, "What what could have been? What I, what I should have done?" But for majority of it, I'm pretty happy with my team. It's just been my first draft. Um, I did get a bit of experience with it, with it one or two more. Um, but yeah, happy as such. An inch at a time will grow throughout the the season. I've got no doubt about that. So Jesse. You know what? You can have the lead for this. Let's get stuck into the draft side of things in this episode. But before we do get into it, guys, if you do are watching on uh, YouTube, just enlarge how you are listening, are uh, watching, because you will be able to see um, it much better. I know it would be pretty hard to see if you're just watching on normal screen or something and haven't enlarged and turned your bloody iPhone sideways, etc. So we just want to make sure everything is on the screen for you so it makes a bit more sense. So Jesse, take it away. All right, mate. Well, yeah, I went through the liberties pretty soon after the draft to to color coordinate a spreadsheet just to you know <laughs> it put it all on. out there. Yeah, straight into it. <laughs> um, so for for anyone watching, um, the pick the the charts down the bottom. So the green is the first pick, blues for the second, um, yellows third, and the the purples the fourth picks. Um, starting from pick number one, I think yeah, not much surprise. It was Nico Hines. Um, you know, very first pick, and Nathan Cleary was second. Um, Kalen Ponga fell in my lap, luckily at third, so I was pretty stoked with that. Um, the rest of the the rest of the line for the top round was Tom Travojevic, Latrell Mitchell. Um, could have been considered an early pickup, really, considering the talent around him at the time when he was taken um, fifth. Uh, I think the next one's even more surprising, Gutherson. Um, yeah, mm. classic. Daniel uh, Totoshini move right that there. Is, that's a shocker. Was he on auto draft or was he like nah. was he drunk? I don't know. I feel like <laughs> he just went rogue with that one. Uh, left behind the following two, Reese Walsh and Scott Drinkwater. So, yeah, mm. don't know what happened there. Don't know if he slipped and fucking hit the wrong button. But 
Yeah, he slipped um, in the sh- slipped in the shower like months. Slipped in the shower. <laughs> <laughs> um, then we got Dave for feet on that. Sean Johnson. Yeah, go on. Just uh, that was one I wanted to talk about. My Scott Drinkwater pick, and I had to yeah. chat with you about this, Jesse, as well. I actually regret picking him, uh, even though it's great to have him. He's a gun. I would have liked to have had Dill Brown. I, yeah, I yeah. missed the beat there and, and having that five eight spots. So yeah. he's my boy. I've got him in all my other drafts and I've been so high on Dill Brown so far or this off season. So I was a little bit annoyed. I, I stopped. You know what? Considering who you ended on five eight with, you could have got a much better fullback and had the best five eight. But mm. obviously Shane's come around, uh picked up Dylan Brown in two drafts. So mm. much later, actually, than um, he went in the other draft that we're in. Yeah, he yeah. Like fourth, was fifth. No, it was fifth. Fifth pick on uh, Saturday, and then uh, for League of Inches, uh, I had no idea who I was going to get down in eleventh. And um, yeah, when Dill Brown came knocking, I was I was very happy, and um, yeah, I locked that in straight away. So like yep. you just you just see like some of the other five eights are not very. Uh, not very good to look at. So, uh, mm. yeah, having Brown in there is just peace of mind, really. Um, yeah, in such a thin position, too. You just got you know, <clears throat> top dog. So, fell very late, very, very late. Um, the last round, or well, the first pick, and at the end was Tino. Big Tino mm. was number 12 in the first round. So, he had the swing, um, ended up grabbing Greg Marzu, too. I reckon that's a great pickup. Um, he definitely would have made it back to him. On the way, he would have been someone else's second pick, but um, yeah, no, he's done well with that double. Um, Ryan Pappenhausen for you, Shane, on the way back, so yeah. you're able to do the double in both your Saturday and Sunday leagues. I know. I was like, I, I mentioned before how I was like, I'll change it up a bit, um, and I think that happened after my first two picks literally were exact same in both drafts. I mean, they're obviously, you know, solid players to have, and I was stoked to have them, but I was like. Uh, I need some point of difference here a bit further on. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, Pappy. Pappy in the second round when um, some people are getting guffo in the first. Yep. Wild enough time, said. Eh? Enough, enough Wild. said. Wild. Um, on the way back up, you got um, Azarko, Harry Grant, first hooker to go. That was a second pick. Not bad. Uh, Val Holmes, Cameron Munster. So, yeah, there goes Munster. Mm. Next best option you've got is, you know, I wouldn't even call him the next best option, but we'll get to that on the way back through. Jerry Evans, Jerome Hughes. Um, there goes some of the halves. Nothing much left after that. Ryan Toto. Uh, I took Payne Haas in the second on the way back through. I was actually tossing up when Haas fell to me. Um, Haas or Hopgood? But in the, mm. in the moment, I was thinking... I could do a lot more at second row a lot later on. Um, mm. I feel like just grabbing the best front row forward in the game as well, next to probably the best fullback in the game at the same time. Um, pretty pretty good position there for it. And then Fanua Blake went straight after. So, yeah, had the same idea as me. And then um, Dan Gagai was the first pick of the draft, second choice. Surprise me, and that's that not one. his worst. <laughs> that's not his worst pickup either, which we'll get into later on. Yeah. But... <laughs> um, you also that, had the swing. Sorry, that is a shocker, though. Like, yeah, yeah, it was very, very surprising to see Gagai go it's, that early. It's it's borderline worse than Gutho in the first round. Yeah, yeah, I don't think Dan Gagai's ever been a second round pick in his life. So, no, um, that was a unless, big one, especially not, for not unless it's like a thirty team comp. Yeah, no, exactly. For a 12 man, you know, a little bit early, I think. Um, but he did have the swing and he took Hopgood. So if you swap those two around and you say, oh, Hopgood was his second, you know, it's it's valid. You take that. But for the uh, for the color chart spreadsheet, it wasn't. So he fucking fumbled the bag <laughs> with that guy. Um, coming back around, who have we got? Cameron Murray. Um, I felt like that was pretty early for Murray, to be honest. Um, just with the amount of second row forward depth that they had in there. Um, I took Mitch Moses on the way back. Um, Eli Katoa, Ola Kawatu, Pat Carrigan. So it was all second rowers after that. Can, can I say this in defense of the uh, second row early? Um, I also thought there was going to be a ton of depth at second row. 
but I kind of felt like it was a bit of a struggle later on. Like I we'll get to my side later, but I got I got a bit of cheapy action happening in my forward pack. Um and yeah, there there was not as much depth as I thought there was gonna be. So Yeah, I think it's because everyone jumps on them so early, man. Because even mm-hmm. still, that was just this is just round three, but you know, there was a couple that went in um in the fourth as well. And then after those guys went, it did get pretty thin. I suppose you were dealing with the actual, you know, classic cashies at that point. Um Sam Walker, not a bad pickup. You know, the best walker, I would say, in the comp at the moment. Followed by the next player big. Joel, mate, what the fuck? Cody Walker. <laughs> Like, I understand I, um, it, you know. I understand it. 5-8, there was nothing left. It was Cody Walker or Dire Straits after that. Um, well, actually, not really when we get to my 5-8. But I want your thoughts, man, because I've, I've bashed this bloke for three weeks. Was that was that the reason? You just saw highest averaging 5-8 and thought you had to get him now <laughs> or you're just going to deal with nothing? Look. I, I, w- I want to say this much in my defense. This is my first draft. Um, very early doing a time draft as well. So the the early stages did get to me. I'll admit that. I was thrown off, getting rushed back from it, which, as I said, I was just all over the shop. Um, it wasn't my finest pick. It wasn't my finest hour. I feel like I went – I got into the draft, and as the draft went on, I reckon if we go in into picks – no, we went deeper into picks. I was taking off. I was just in my element. So it was a bit of panic. I was a bit worried about the the five eight stocks being so thin that we've spoken about time and time again. But he's already cost me, uh, and I absolutely hate it. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> you fumbled the I've bag no with defense. Dill Brown. If yeah, fumbled the bag exactly. with Dill Brown, and now you panicked. I, so yeah, I stuffed it. I should have had Dill Brown, and then everything else would have fallen into place. But I didn't, so here we are. That's it. Um, the next one also very surprising. Dallin with Tenny Zalesniak. Uh, that was a Marcel pickup too, so surprised me that he did that one. Um, <clears throat> obviously got high hopes, but yeah. It's a, it's a bold strategy, Carden. Let's see if it pays off. The next pick <laughs> was Ruben Garrick. For sure you're picking Garrick before Zalesniak, man. DWZ falls mm. later than that. Um, you know, he may have been I scared think... off with the center, the center switch. There's a pedigree behind Garrick, man. He's done it forever. Yeah. Um, Matt Burton for Shane. Mm, yeah. In the halves. Very surprising. You took Burton considering his yeah. appeal is at five, eight and you already had Dylan Brown. So, um, I was just looking at the, uh, I was looking at the halves like halfback ranks and there was, there was not much left. Like, um, I was expecting to be able to at least get Sammy Walker. Um, I think I think I got him in the fourth round um, on the yeah. on the Saturday in the draft before, and um, yeah, so I wasn't like I wasn't going in looking for Burton, but um, yeah, you just kind of play eyes up footy, and um, <laughs> there just wasn't that many halves left. So yeah, um, no, you know he, he's got he's got the jewel, and if I manage to. S- I've got Trindle there as well, so I've got like flexibility with my halves, which um, which is more than I can say for a lot of teams. Look, I've got I got Burton, I've got Dill Brown. Like that's yeah, that's going to be better than the majority of halves pairings. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You might even be able to afford offload one of them too. Good trade bait because yeah, the five eights are nowhere, and you've got three of them, so mm. not too bad. I'll, I'll do yeah, uh, I'll do you an on air trade deal. Cody Walker for Trindle. Holy fuck. Yeah, yeah I'll take that. Sweet. I'll, I'll get rid of Cody Walker. Fuck. I regret this so much. Bloody I regret hell. this we, so much. Actually, are you doing that trade? I'll, I'll, just, I'll propose send, that. Uh, I'll send it through I'll to you right now. I'll propose that trade, I reckon. Fucking hell. That's a bit how you're going. But what do you, it doesn't oh, actually do help those out at all, to be fair, because you can't play either of them at the same time. So... Not like you'd ever play Cody Ooh. Walker if you could avoid it. Don't get in his ear. I think no, it's no, a I'm just trade. Yeah, not for you though. I can't. You can't. Um, you can't trade me. To, uh, you can't trade him till next week anyway. So it's pure. Yeah, true. All right. Well, we'll wait on that. Have time to rethink. It's out in the world now. 
Yeah, I've got it. Um, it's, in, it's on video. It's, it's locked in. Yeah. Um, it. Last place with Drow's pick. He did the double. He had the swing vote again and took Coruscant and Damian Cook. So don't know what the hell happened there. Might have been an auto That's draft. That's for sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, whoever needs a hooker, hit him up. He's got a plethora of them. So, yeah, that was a strange one. Coming back from the bottom uh, in the fourth round, Isaac Tungo for shame. Pretty good. Quality center wing option. So, yeah, not mm. a bad take there. Um, in hindsight, would you have rather taken a second rower considering Nakora was the next option? Um, yeah, I mean, it's hard because, uh, like, center wings, we got four in this. So, obviously, like, we'd done the draft the day before where we only had three uh, center wings and two 2RF. Two so, yep. this one, the, the depth wasn't quite there. So, I, um, yeah, I think from, like, then on, I definitely focused on on loading up at uh, center wing. But, um, yeah. yeah, it's kind of, you can't you can't load up everywhere, you know, like, you're going to be caught mm. slightly short somewhere when it's like, yeah, full squads like this. So, Yeah, no, that's that's a fair point. Uh, but yeah, Britton Nakora was the next one up. Uh, Adam Reynolds. So you took Matt Burton before Adam Reynolds. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Okay. I, 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 do, I, I do it again. Reynolds yeah. is like, you know, Reynolds is kind of old and, you know, yeah. there was a time, there was a time where he's always injured. Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, Berto's got the jewel, like I said, but yeah. um, he's he's no, more fair. valuable. Of course. Yeah, the five eight, you know, pushes him up, you know, above everyone else, really. Um, yo, on your way up, Joel. Solid. Yep. Reliable. I was wondering. I I felt like at that point of time, I got some attacking players in, and the upside factor. I just wanted to get someone who was a stock steady. 70 point sort of guy and i think yo's yeah. been very underrated when it comes to that stuff and he just plows through that week in yeah. week out yeah i feel like that's where he really you know peaks is like his draft value is quite good and you got him in the fourth you know what i mean like you spend a big money for him in classic but obviously getting him as late as you did i think that's pretty solid um two of us a check as well that was the next one through Laughing. so that's that's pretty handy mm. yeah that's really nice um, the hammer. I reckon up. I'll oh. go quickly. Uh, uh, just yep. on two of us to check. I feel like if that, if the draft's done a little bit, like more, oh, a bit later, I think he goes a bit earlier. I think the hype on him now, yeah. I reckon you'd be putting the, probably the green tag. Oh, not the green. Sorry, the the light blue, maybe Second yellow rounder. onto. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's that's early. That's early, boys. Only yeah, only yeah, true yeah. guns like Dane Gagai go in the second round. <laughs> yeah, I feel like if there was a chance that he fell to me, there was a couple actually, because I'm pretty sure on this round I was looking at centers. Um, two of us, a Sheck, obviously didn't make it to me. Neither did the Hammer. Um, surprising one, Sean Lane. Yeah. Very. Oh, oh, that's given him enough. Giving him enough that, time to go around another. One or two rounds before he was probably another was four rounds. Crazy! But... I got him in round eleven in our draft on Saturday. Yeah, so he went unbelievably early. That was Yikes. a proper shit the bed moment, I think. Um, Joey Manu. So pretty much, I, I'm actually certain when this happened too. I was eyes on both of them, and neither of them made it to me just before it reached. So I was like, you know what? Fuck the center wings for a round. <laughs> I went and picked up Marshall King. So. That's lethal though, like Toa and Manu. Oof. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Cool. He went hard and Tommy Turbo as well. So he's he's gone all out in the, Is that um, a good in start? the there. Yeah, it was it was good, man. That's why I really because there was a few good ones left at that point as well, but it was that fourth round that kind of took that's left of him left away. Because you lost Tango, you lost two of us a check, the hammer, Joe Manu. Gone. There was another really good um center wing coming up in round five, but we can get to that. Yeah, it was round four, actually. So, yeah, after I took Marshall King, Reese Robson was next. This guy had the same idea as I did. Um, took the prop when he took, when I took my prop, took the hooker when I took wine. So, um, you know, he's a smart boy. And then, <laughs> yeah, Campbell Graham. Fourth pick. Oh. <laughs> after taking Dan Gagai in the oh, second, water. he takes fucking Campbell Graham in the fourth. So, uh, yeah. Shout out to your water. 
It was so his first was, draft experience as well, and he yeah. has been quick on the waivers I've, I've seen. So, yeah, he, trial, he, trial he, by he, fire for him. It was pretty brutal, man. And you think, like, he took Heinz first pretty good. He took Hop good as well. Can't knock it. But he just threw away his entire draft side, yeah. losing those two early ones as well. So, um, looking at the rest of the teams, like, obviously, those were the first four picks. I didn't go in and pick, you know, all the way through five and everything else on the way down. But I'll touch on the teams on the way through. So with Waters' team, his hook is Croker. He's got DeBellin and Walsh up front. Welsh, sorry, Christian Welsh up front in the props. Hopgood, Wilton, and Jake Turbo, second rows. I just don't find that very inspiring, to be honest with you. Um, besides Hopgood. Hines, Ezra Mam is his 5'8". He would have hated that <laughs> the other day. That would have been a horrible thing to see. Um, <laughs> that guy as well. Considering the other center wings he's got, Gagai's a clear standout. You and Aiken didn't even get named. Saab did his hammy. Kyle Felt's in there, but, you know, for what he's upside that has, he stopped it hardcore. Um, and then Teddy, you know, Teddy was later than a fifth round pick. So, you know, the fact that, um, you know, you took drink water when you That's did. good. Can't knock drink water's ability because he's a great first rounder. But when you had Brown, you could have gotten Teddy as late as that. So that just goes to show, you know, how many fullbacks there were. Um, the bench, Stafford Toa, for whatever reason. Campbell Graham, Clemmer, Whitehead, Townsend. So, yeah, not happening. Um, Syed's team, he's got Robson, Fanua Blake, Fisher-Harris. Not bad, pretty solid. Murray, Nanai, Lemuelu. Looking at that now, that's actually not bad. Lemuelu's got the spot. Mm. Uh, Cleary and Flanagan. A decent back row. Yeah. Cleary's obviously a gun. Flanagan will just, you know, he's better than Cody Walker. So, fucking <laughs> Cody Walker. Uh, Zach Lomax, Connor Tracy. So, Billy Smith. so just a live live on air trade. So, I'll trade you Flanagan for Cody Walker. <laughs> there you go. So, I'd hit him up. Yes. Um, Connor <laughs> Tracy, obviously. Connor Tracy, not named. Uh, Billy Smith, who are injured. So he's going to have to do some stuff there. I think he, if he's still got Brimson, he makes his way into the team pretty comfortably. But he's his fullback, so yeah. looks like he'll be opting for Terrell Sloan if he still has him. Um, Nelson, not on the bench. Josh Kerr, Tupanua, injured. And Tom Eisenhuth, good for a week stint. Uh, then there's, this team's probably going to win, to be honest with you. This team's actually cracked. Oh, who, Whose team is it? <laughs> oh, fuck, it's mine too. I just had a quick Gosh, look at it. And I realized yeah. how good it was. Damn. Um, Marshall King up front, Payne Haas, Mitch Barnett. Fucking can't go wrong. Liam Martin, Hudson Young, and Bo Furmore. Um, none of them were priority picks. I think me, Josh, and Shane were the only ones to take a second rower later than – our first one was later than the fifth round. So um, I feel like for the depth, you know, pretty solid. Moses and Luke Brooks, you all laughed when I took Brooks at 5'8". Even I laughed. I didn't think it was a great pick when I took it, but – We'll see how he goes. Didn't do too what, bad. What round did you get him? Brooks. Um, mm. Probably six. Okay. I feel like six because I feel like the next pick after this was Herbie. Yeah, I think it was. Um, I feel like my fifth pick was Herbie finally. I was and I come back up and yeah, I took Brooks on the way back through. So I feel like he was, yeah, number six. Um, but I got Herbie, Alex Johnson, Tomoko, and Labor with Kalen Ponger as my fullback. So just a wealth of talent. Uh, Phoenix Crossland, Verrills, Angus Crichton, Bronson Cherry, Dream Buller. Obviously, a bit of hopes and dreams with um, Crichton, Cherry. Verrills isn't starting, so none of them are going to make that starting side. Buller's yeah. not bad to have there on the bench. Buller? Mm. Yeah, not bad. That's not yeah. bad. I got him real late too. I was pretty happy with that because, you know. To be honest, if Buller. I was Sayed, I would have had Buller ahead of Brimson. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, because I didn't start filling my bench until my team was finished. And um, oh, he might have been close towards the end of my team getting sorted. But, yeah, he, he fell quite late. Maybe it was the buy that turned same people as, off him. Same as Joe with Nick Meany. So I would have had Buller ahead of both of those players. So. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. I think that's um. I think there was actually a, a team on Saturday that took Nick Meany as their fullback as well. So obviously not realizing he's a center. Um, next team, start from the top. Wade Egan, Tamalolo, and Totola. Um, he's got Ellie Katoa. 
I think Elliot Cole is going to be fantastic for him, to be honest. Yeah, I love that. Would have that. liked to have him myself. That was really good. Third pick as well. Yeah, he's in for a big one. Bryce Cartwright, too. Yeah. Um, considering, you know, how he, he could have fallen quite late, I think Bryce Cartwright's got a lot to his game again. A lot of offloads, so he'll be happy with that. Um, Adam Elliott, nothing too exciting. Ben Hunt. Isaiah Katoa, not even named either. So I haven't actually looked into that one too much, but he doesn't have a backup 5'8". No. Besides, you know, JC, but he's injured for a while. Um, the backs is really where it stands out for him, obviously. Brian Toto, Joey Manu. He's got Bailey Simonson. Don't love it. Uh, Dylan Lucas, though. Lucky duck with that. Second mm. row as well, so pretty good. Um, Tommy Turbo. Isaiah Papali'i, Viliami Kikau, White, Chuala, and Campbell. So not a bad side, really, but I don't know. I feel like you just got to strengthen up the top because, yeah, the backs are pretty lethal when they're on. Um, yeah, oh, Josh- yeah. He's, he's, uh, he's like, yeah, like I said, Toro Mano is crazy. Turbo, he's crazy. But, yeah, like, there's some other parts that are uh, fairly uninspiring, like his new 5'8", Kieran Foran. Oh, okay, so he has picked up someone. But, you mm. know, you could do worse than Foran, I suppose, considering he got him off the waivers. Um, he's still going still to play him in his side every week. So, well, that's I mean, the problem. It doesn't, <laughs> yeah. doesn't really matter where he got him from. It's like, what's his output going to be? Probably no different right, to what Zach. he's expecting out of Katoa. So. It's all right, Zach. Just send me a live trade, please. I'll trade you Foran for Cody Walker. <laughs> Oh, you really want off him already. I love it. Oh, mate. mate, you got too many you deals for me, Cody. You got me worried now, Jesse. You just really got me. You know what? I've got Cody every reason Walker. to be worried. Joel, can I can I give you a hot draft tip? And this is for all the listeners out there in draft land. Don't listen to Jesse. If, no, you. no, no. If you drafted someone, hold fucking solid on them and don't jump off ship. After one or two bad weeks, because they're no. going to be up and down, they're not always going to deliver. Like, look at their average. You know, they're going to score their average. So there's there's going to be swings, and you drafted them for a reason. Maybe the reason is you're a dumbass, and you know you picked the wrong player. <laughs> but you drafted for a reason. You know, back yourself. That's it. That's it, man. I'm with you, He's Cody. Your guy now. With you, you can't like... just, you can't right just get off him. And as much as you knock him, he's got every chance to be the third highest scoring. 5'8 in the game once again. So he'll be an absolute nightmare roller coaster, but like he's your boy, you know? Like, yeah. And he'll score massive on the weeks you don't need him to either. And when you desperately need those points, he'll fucking come out with 35 and you'll just be like, all I wanted I, was what you did last week. I'll so, tell you what, as soon as Tommy Sangster comes out with points for unnecessary niggle, Cody Walker <laughs> is going to absolutely fucking skyrocket. <laughs> like, yeah. He gets 10 yeah. points for every time oh, he loses Lord. his head. Yeah, somebody, somebody scores a try, he comes in, pushes him. Fucking, there you go. There's five. Lock it in. Base, base that beast. Base <laughs> that bully. <laughs> That's it. Um, Josh's team. Braley up front. Not bad, obviously. 80 minutes. You can't go wrong with that. Got him pretty late, too. Um, Blake Braley as well. Not Jaden. He was next. Uh, Sipley and Arrow. Oh, it's not nice to see, to be fair. Mm. For a pair of props, it's probably, I would say, up there with the worst combination. Um, worst combination in the league, but it's a low, you know, not an exciting position. Um, he's got Ola Kawatu, Preston, and Sean Lane. So his second row definitely makes up for it. Yeah, but he went way like too early on Lane. Like, Ola yeah, Kawatu well, is a great pickup. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Like Lane, he honestly could have waited like multiple rounds. Yep. Well, he didn't take Jacob Preston before him, and I would rate Preston probably higher than Lane as far as they go together. So, Mm. yeah, I think he would have realized pretty quickly that he has reached massively that one, unless he just desperately wanted him in the team. Mm. Um, You know, and if that's your reasoning, fair enough. I did the same with Fermor in the Saturday draft. I probably took him maybe three rounds too early, maybe longer, but. I wanted him, so not bad. But yeah, no, super lane on, super early on lane. Uh, Jerome Hughes, I know a lot of people want to Jerome Hughes actually. So, bro, uh, I wanted him like I wanted him bad, like I wanted him in multiple drafts, and I got him in nothing. So yeah, missed that one. He was a second pick, so that was solid. And Jerome Luai, so his his halves pairing are pretty decent. 
um, as far as the rest goes. Uh, I don't love his center wings, though, at all. It's rocks, rocks or diamonds. Yeah, all four of them. So Mulatalo, Ravalawa, Philip Sammy, and Ramian as four center wings. Yuck. You know, it's, yeah, it's as bad as volatile as they come. So maybe, maybe he's a secret Sharks fan and uh, he's back in the boys in <laughs> with an easy, easy schedule. Well, he's got three of them. Um, yeah. So, yeah, could be gone for the fixtures, but I think it was just not very intelligent picking, potentially. But Mulatalo is obviously the best option out of all four of them in the back. Um, so that's not too bad. And, you know, Ravalawa on his day can do something, but he's going to find some fucking low scores out of all of them at some point. Um, but Latrell Mitchell, you know, fullback, first pick. He'd be happy with what he saw. Uh, his bench, Oates, Watson, Palacia, Sullivan, and Sebastian Chris. So, again, nothing to write home about on the bench. No, oh, come on, mate. Palacia, he's a gun. Oh, here we go. <laughs> you should get him in classic. Uh, maybe. Well, to be fair, he probably played Palacia over Sipley. I don't think Sipley's named at all. So, we didn't play. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Yeah. Let me, so let that me check his side. He, he, might be, he might be too late for that if he hasn't done it already. He no, he would have already done it. that change, surely. Um. But uh, what else has he got? Chris Sullivan. I don't know. I just don't see much happening there. Would have made a few changes already from this side. This was the draft team, so obviously everyone's wavered since. Yeah. Uh, he he did change. He's got Palacia in his um yeah in his okay. starting FRF. He's still got Sipley on his bench, even though he right. didn't play. So Locked he's got in. Oates. He's so he's still got Oates. He's currently got uh, Sebastian Chris. I guess he's coming back. So. Yeah, and he's got Connor Watson still, so he does not have much wiggle room on his bench. No, there's not much not a single. Him. Yeah, if he, he there's no there's no auto emergency for him this week. If anybody in his starting squad's out, he's he's done. Shit, that's not what you want. Um, Cronulla Dulla, Daniel's team, mm. Toto, uh, Jane Braley. Fucking hell, Yikes. that's no, no good. No, no, no good. not after taking Gutho. And he has not have it on. Doesn't have a hooker on the bench either. Doesn't have a hooker on the bench. So uh, I'm sure that's changed by now. But yeah, Braley he's up got top. Jo- he's got Joey Lassick. Right. Okay. Fair enough. You know, could be worse. Uh, Tarpany and Junior Paulo. Very solid front row. Uh, Paddy Carrigan, Kurt Capewell, Ruben Cotter. Pretty decent second row too. Um, Capewell probably not as much, but I feel like Cotter's value is in the forwards, in the, in the front row, but obviously mm. has to play him somewhere. Uh, Cherry Evans is decent as a second pick, I'd say. Probably at that point, there would have been some other options, but I can see why he's taking Cherry Evans there. He's reliable. Uh, don't like Luke Keary, though. But again, in a very thin position, there's fucking no one else to get. So uh, his wing and center's hammer, which was his fourth round pick, Tass. I don't mm. love that at all. It's not yeah, very good, played- but... He played played Tass for twenty one points the other day. Yeah, so that's that's going to happen. Uh, Will Panasini, very good, and Sienna Katoa, not very good. Uh, but he's a diehard Sharky fan, so he would have been the last one left for him. And then Clint Gutherson is his fullback. Man, I still can't get over that. Eh, so early. <laughs> uh, Lindsay Collins, Blake Wilson, Marion Seve, not named. Avrilo, not named, and Xavier Savage. So pretty much all center wings, probably to replace the dirt that he's got starting. So he has he has picked up uh Taruva. Um yep. so yeah, that's a decent I'd be playing him over Tass most weeks. Unfortunately he's already played Tass yep. this week. But uh yeah. Yeah. No good there. Any other talking points on that team? Do you reckon they'll do quite well or no? Mm. I don't know. I don't think there's much excitement with like X Factor players. There's no. no real like high ceiling sort of players. He's gonna be no, in the mix, you know what you're going to get from him. But yeah. did, did you yeah. did you not did you not see uh, Clint Gutherson? You know, what, if he can do yeah, anything well, like he did last year, he'll be very very happy for it. True. But I just don't see yeah. it with Brownback. Well, um, even the even the Eels. Were, I was going to say even the Eels think Guffo is not an X factor fullback. So yeah, exactly. Well, I, I think he's class, but it's hard to see him go again for what he did last year. But I wouldn't put it past him. It is the king after all. And just That's by it. the way, everyone, we don't have a captain's league here either. So it's yeah. just what you Going get is what Putting you get. Putting your boys out, making them punch on with each other. 
Um, the <laughs> Watermuller Warthogs. Josh, what a name. Uh, Reed Marnie up top. You know, at least he's going to play 80, I suppose. Yeah. He's going to miss about 5,000 tackles. Maybe. But I don't think they've... Oh, I suppose he got Kurt Mann as a risk. But, um, yeah, he's always been solid for an 80 anyway. So it's not not the worst thing, really, in a shit position. Um, Tanel Paseca, Max King. I actually don't mind it, to be honest with you. Um, I really like Max King. I think he's going to have a cracker year. And Paseca kind of pushed himself up in the last half of last season. So, yeah, there's definitely worse combos out there. Uh, Ryan Madison, Kaloma Tungi, Helam Lukey. Again, I don't mind it. Mm. There's, there's upside to be had there. I, yeah. Like the only issue with Madison is like, yeah, he's going to be a bit up and down, but he does always seem to go fairly well. Like, yeah, uh, even if he's on the bench, which he is. So, yeah, exactly. And he always gets good minutes off the bench. He's been playing off interchange the last two years pretty consistently and pretty well. It's just as long as he doesn't get knocked out, his brain's porridge. Um, and looking at that, he didn't pick any of those players in any of his early picks, too. They would have been all after round five. So I feel like he's done quite well with it. Mm. Um, Sam Walker. Yeah, solid. His, his halves are actually pretty good. Sam Walker and um, Cameron Munster. I really like it. I think he's going to have a great pair up there with those guys. Um, RTS, solid again. Selwyn Cobo, Moses Sawley. I don't like that at all. Um, <laughs> that's just, yeah, it's another Rocks and Diamonds thing between the two of them. Um, Benny Turbo, but Burbo drafted. Mm. Hindsight Merchant over here. He called that one. He, he backed him in, you know, credit to him. Yeah, no, that's that's what you want from a from a draft pick like that. A bit of faith. And uh, Reese Walsh, so he's got a lot of talent, man. That's a, it's a solid side. Hmm. I think you might, you think you might do quite well. Um, Josh Curran, Hastings, Tupo, Jackson Paulo, and Tessie New, who is also named. So he's come away with a few um with a few good starters out of all that. But yeah, uh, it's just the just Cobo and Sawley. I just don't like that at all. I, I don't know. See what he does with it. But overall, what are your thoughts on that? I think it's pretty good. Uh, I was gonna say that, yeah, like he's he's got like one of the top three halves pairings. Um yeah. Yeah, in all the comp. Like, you look at uh, some of the teams, you got, you know, Hines and Cleary first round, but they're paired with Ezra, Ezra Mam, and Kyle Flanagan. So, um, yeah, it's it's not it's not great. Um, so, well, I think he's got two two really good halves there. Um, like you said, you know, some of those center wings are going to be a bit rocks or diamonds. Um, but, you know, all in all, I don't, I don't see it being too bad. Um, mm. I reckon it'll be competitive. The Warthogs, the Warthogs will get amongst it. Yeah, solid. Um, Joel, did you want to go through your team? Yeah, well, why not? I'll give you your yeah, voice box a little bit of a break. Thanks, mate. Uh, Jacob Little, I think I got an in pretty late, a left hooker basically. And uh, I, well, this was around the news that started filtering out that he'd be looking like an 80-minute hooker. So I was actually pretty pleased to get little when I did. It wasn't sort of a, a grab at all. So I'll take that one. Uh, Leah Thompson, I've been big on uh, all preseason. So I'm glad to have him. And Terrell May as well. That was great. So I'm actually really pleased with my front row forward pairing. Um, a lot of upside, and especially if we, we have the news come out that Lenny gets suspended. I'm loving it even more. Um, Isaiah, yeah, already spoken about him. Uh, Tyson Frizzell. Uh, at the time, there was rumors that he'd be changing sides to Ponga's stronger side, um, which I was even more wrapped on. But I think that's been put to water now. I'll put to bed. Uh, it's not really happening. But still, I don't mind him. I still think he's in for for a decent year for for the Newcastle Knights. Uh, Pia Cura, I was stung. Um, yeah. on the weekend, so I was stung by two players on the weekend. Him and Walker, which wasn't ideal at all but <laughs> we march on and there's a there's a center wing that stung me as well but that's we will get to him uh jamal fogarty again i left i left half back and hooker for a bit and it's something i'll probably look back on now and ideally probably wouldn't have done but i remember our chat and we all we you did you both spoke about the fact that not to chase positions like this once the the real high ceiling guys are gone you can sort of just let it go and most weeks they're all sort of get around the same sort of pro, um, points, these sorts of players. So 
I thought Jamal Fogarty's not a bad option. He'll do majority of the work at Canberra. Everything will revolve around him. And for the tries that can score, hopefully he's knocking over majority of that. Cody Walker, already mentioned him. See you later. Val Holmes, love having him. Obviously, my second yep. pick. I'm high, so high up on Val Holmes this year. I've, I said it now. Um, other super coach team list preview that I think he'll be the, the highest scoring center wing of the year. So I, I'm glad to have him. Crichton, I, I grabbed at him purely off the fact that I don't think Taft will be the long serving fullback for the Bulldogs. I think they have to change him and put Crichton to the fullback. So I'm hoping that happens sooner rather than later. And I'll be ideally having him in the side. Bradman Best, I think he's in for a massive year. Um, mm-hmm. So I was actually really happy to, to land him. And then hopefully all those three just help me take away stacks. <laughs> uh, not too pleased with him. It just sort of happened and here we are. Uh, another pick that I'm not too happy with. Rocks and diamonds, but majority of it is rocks. Just go look for the ball, Katoni. Please do me a favor, bro. This is a, you're in the footy <laughs> field where you need port. to get the ball. <laughs> go get the ball. <laughs> Uh, Scotty Drinkwater, very, very happy with him considering some of the fullbacks that were picked before him. I probably would have had – I probably would have put him before Walsh and Gustafson if I'm being honest, boys. I, I think his ceiling there and perhaps even yeah. – Latrell has a very good ceiling, but maybe consistency-wise, maybe Drinky ahead of Latrell as well. But I'm interested because when I looked at that, that was one of those runs that you both spoke <clears> about and you said that can happen in drafts for like a position starts to go and then a run. I only did it because it was Scott Drinkwater. I was like, "Fuck, I got to, I got to jump on Scott Drinkwater." Yeah, um, that, that was a run that was kind of built into the draft because when you looked at the rankings, like there was just all these fullbacks in a row. So it was that was that was always going to happen. Um, it's more like the run is kind of more when you see like, oh shit, like Harry Grant's gone and and Cook's gone and Coruscant's gone. Oh fuck, like I don't have a hooker, and, and next thing you're grabbing. Uh, you know, um, Jaden Braley Blake in the Braley. third round. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, but uh, no, you, um, you're, uh, your side's pretty solid, man. Mm. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. I, I think my bench is decent. I tried to really spread my bench out so all positions were, were covered, a, a couple of jewels and stuff as well. So I'll put a, try to put a little bit of thought behind it. Jaden saw I'm really pleased with because I think he's in for a really good year on the edge there with the Dragons, even though he's a Dragons player. Reg, I just chucked him in. I thought, you never know. With, with Reg, you might be able to get something out of him, so he's all right to sit there. Liero, pretty happy that he gets the, the starting lock position for the Storm, so hopefully he has some pretty decent base work in him, and whenever I need to call upon him, he's there. Aiden Caesar, just as my – he has both half and 5'8 jewels, so I'm um, see what happens there. I'm not happy with him, but at least he, he's there to, to plug – you know, his guy, he might be starting Cody to see if Cody Walker doesn't pull his yeah. finger out of his ass. Um, and my boy, I had to go him last pick, far longo. Um, as soon as he comes back, if Pappenhausen goes down, I'm laughing. But that means also I've already got stag, uh, drink water. He'd probably be there instead of Stags, to be honest, because he's got a centering duel at the moment. 100%. So I had to have my boy in there. Yeah, I took him on Saturday as well. as my last pick. Just, mm. well, just he won't be doing... Like, won't be doing much, boys. Pappy's going to be dominating all year long. Yeah. I hope you're right. I, I, even though for the draft this episode, I hope you're not right. But as a super coach owner, uh, I hope you're right. But, yeah, no, like, uh, I'm pretty happy with my team overall. Yeah. Like, there is a couple of little things looking back. Being my first draft, I wish I changed. And I really wish I got on Dill Brown. But in saying that, Scott Drinkwater is a gun. You've both already spoken about him in general super coach talk that he's just an out-and-out superstar. So, yeah. Happy to have him, but yeah, it comes at the price of a pretty average halves pairing, which has me slightly worried. Yeah, no, nah, you'll be able to work something out with that one. But I feel like, yeah, where drink water falls to you, it's rude not to. You know what I mean? Yeah. Considering. Um into Marcel's team. He's gone hard here with the the early pickups in the forwards. So he's got Harry Grant. Um, you know, can't knock that at all. Flegler and Fanua Pole. Don't know what that was about. He's got Uto Kamanu as well as his other front row forward. Same from the Tigers with a round one buy. So I'm sure something's already changed there, but I just couldn't understand that pickup. Um, Dave Fafita was his first pick. So he's obviously riding that one out for a few weeks, but when he's back, he's got probably the best second rower in the game. 
can't knock that. Uh, Tohu and Johnny Bateman. So he's pretty pretty solid all around. Um, his halves, Adam Reynolds, Tom Dearden. Um, I feel like he's going to be disappointed most weeks out of the pair of them, whether it's both not firing at the same time or one going good and one pretty average. But, yeah. I don't mind the Dearden play. I, I don't, don't mind, mind the it. play either. I just don't think there's a yeah. great deal of ceiling upside between the pair of them. Um, you got to remember, oh, Dearden think, is still super young. Yeah. So. I think he takes off. I think the, yeah. this becomes his team this year. He's a captain now. Um, it's no – Townsend's on the out. I don't know if it's going to happen mid-year, uh, at the end of the year, whatever, but he's definitely on the out. And I think Dearden steps up. So I think Dearden's a sneaky, sneaky play here. I think he could be one of those ones we look back on the end of the year and he's a real big super coach player. Yeah, I hope so. It would be nice to see. Um, he's probably going to get his consistency out of Reynolds, yeah, whether Dearden goes up and down a bit or not. But, yeah, if he can really make something of it this season, because you're right, he is quite young. Um, I would have rather considering... Dearden and Walker, I'll say that. Yeah, well, you could have. Could have grabbed anyone else. Mm. But, yeah. Yeah, well, 90-second picks, man. Pressure's on. It's a pressure cooker in that draft environment. He gets it going. Love it. Uh, his center wings, Big Dallin. Fair enough. Um, Suwali, Jack Bird, and Mike Acevo with Will Kennedy at fullback. I can't say I love it, to be honest. I can't say I love it. Yeah, Suwali's an interesting one because at full strength, I don't even know if he's in the team. No, nah, not anymore. Um, Jack Bird, whether he gets to full strength at all. Um, it's obviously, he's got his issues when he's with his injuries and whatnot. But, yeah, Mike Acevo's out as well. And then Will Kennedy. So that's the problem. If you don't get yourself a fullback, you you're picking up dregs like that. So he's done that two drafts in a row. Like the the day before, he it was a running joke that we're like, when are you going to get a fucking fullback, mate? Like it's getting ridiculous. Yeah. Left it so, so late. Uh, it was just he's nothing. doubled. He's doubled down. But um, yeah. Look, I I don't I don't love it, but uh, he's very healthy in the forwards. It's mm. just he's, he's like backs are just not it. So he's definitely got a strategy of going heavy in the forwards because we saw it in a, a previous draft with him where he's had a similar strategy. Um, so, yeah, maybe he's got the secret sauce cooking in his uh, spreadsheets, you know. Maybe. That's one thing, hey, if, it's, if you know Marcel, you can never really count him out. Like he always seems to find a way, especially when it matters. So. He'll, he'll work something out towards the end, but he's got um, Billy Walters, Utoi Kamanu, Tanner Boyd, Strange, and Taff on his bench. So, yeah, the Strange pickup was pretty decent for him. That um, Obviously, it's worked out quite well, but he definitely played him in his center wing over a few of those guys. So Yeah, Strange, Strange is in his starter now. So Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Um, all right, next team, Jamie's one, the Auntie Hunters. <laughs> I don't understand the team name. <laughs> I just don't get it. He's, he's <laughs> there's, just... a, there's a... There's an inside joke there with him and chasing, yeah. Auntie, <laughs> he's not. He's yeah. not after. He's not after milfs. He's after like ales or I don't even know. So. Yeah, I don't know what you call them. <laughs> doesn't doesn't work, that. does it? No, not really. Yeah. Um, he's just an auntie fucker. That's it. Good on him. Fucking, there's some decent aunties out there. Um, I sort of laughed a little bit when he made this pick in general, but Chris Randall. He's fucking got names at hooker, so mm. not bad, man. Picked up on that one pretty well, but yeah, that'll be decent for him, really, because I'm sure he got him pretty late. Uh, Jared Wallace, obviously not, so there's one he's got to sort out, and Josh Papali. Yeah, not ideal, but the hooker thing came off well for him. Uh, Nakora, Sorensen, and Butcher. So Nakora's great, but yeah, Sorensen's out, and Butcher was on the bench. So that forward pack's pretty mm. depleted now. Um, and he's got Gilbert on his bench. So he's, oh, he's, I'm he's looking. Really traded that. His side is an absolute shit show. That's fucked. His bench oh, is non existent. Yeah, that's a shame. Um, Sean Johnson, pretty good. Dane Laurie is a 5'8. Obviously, not even going to get a game. So I uh, don't know what is going on with that side. I can't see it right now. But is there any um, any changes that have been made so far? Um, well, he hasn't he changed a couple of waves. Jared, Jared Wallace is still in his starting side, who's not playing. Um, yep. yeah, damn, yeah, yeah no, it's not happening. 
He's got Nat Butcher on his bench, mm. um, who is not there from his draft side. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, not much Fuck happening. Me. He's depleted. Uh, he's got Salmon. He's, he's, he's got Jaden Salmon in his, uh, in his center yeah, wing. Yeah, so. picked him up off the waivers. But his center wing is solid. Like, he's got Azarko. He's yeah. got Ruben Garrick. Um, John Rapana. He's going to be fullback too, so that's solid. Peachy's probably going to get a decent spell of minutes um, in this one game, whether or not he keeps playing or not. Uh, and until then, Edwards at fullback, so you know he makes up for it in the backs, I would say. But yeah, it's it's just there is nothing happening up front, unfortunately for that. Um, he's got Chance on the bench, Hallsbro, Gilbert, Burns, and Sexton. So um, what's that? Chance is out, Halls is out, Gilbert's out for the season. Um, Burns isn't in at all, and good. Sexton wasn't picked. So, ladies and gentlemen, that is probably the worst start you could have in draft yeah. series. That's, <laughs> That's yeah. not good. It's not great. Um, yeah, it's not great. Feel for you, Jamie. Yeah, Feel for you, bro. Got to work it out. You got to hit the waivers up, make some trades. Um, Shane, I feel like you yeah. can take this one away, mate. Yeah, well, let's let's talk about the championship winning side. Um, we did. As with this. Third pick. Cronella Dollar. <laughs> um, as, as, we were to- as we're talking about, uh, thank you to uh, Joel for leaving Dylan Brown. So, yeah, Dill Brown, Pappy. Uh, I'm going. I'm meant to be going top to bottom, aren't I? I'm going off. I'm going off my, uh, going? my draft picks. <laughs> I'm I'm going off uh, the order of my draft picks. So, um, yeah. So Dill Brown, Pappy, Burden, Targo, Karaz in the fifth. That was one that was like a. I'm gonna snake him. Um, before Jesse does, that was for the content, and then you turn around and you say the content was garbage, which it was. But uh, just snip that part out because I'm pretty sure I lost. <laughs> yeah, my that line. was quality. Uh, you but, could um, see the moment where Jesse's face just like <laughs> dropped. He was so yeah. so sad. But uh, yeah, then then it was Taylor and May who I was I was quite happy to own. Um, you have gone gone heavy on the um, on the Penrith centers. Um, so loaded up there. Uh, Fodawaka, um, very happy to have him at FRF. He's probably my big bopper forward. Seventh pick was my first forward, uh, so I was leaving it quite late. Um, cheese at hooker. Um, and then I think somebody mentioned that I didn't have any Sharks players, or it might have been me, and then the next three players were all Sharks. I got, uh, I got Talakai at center wing. McInnes to RF, and then I picked up Trindle to uh, stash on my bench for like a uh, a backup for the halves. So um, I grabbed Cooler as well. So I'm praying for the downfall of uh, Tom Turovich. Um And then it was the run of the uh, the cheapies. I got Smithies, Wong, and uh, Samuel Hughes. So uh, Luciano in there, uh, Willison, who didn't get named and is still in my side. And Drew Hutchison, who is no longer there uh, with the snuggle bugs. So, yeah, it was. Um, we started out strong, and then uh, we started to go a bit, uh, a bit silly, and then we ended up. Who just did you going trade Hutchison for? No, I just, I just dropped him. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So the current side. Uh, so in the front row, I've dropped Hughes as well, um, and I've got uh, Tui Kamakamika. Um, yeah, second row is as is. So everything is as is in the starting side. Um, I picked up Kepi, um, and I've also got Hosking. So other than that, nothing's changed. So mm. yeah, Hutchison, Leilua, and, um, and Hughes didn't survive, unfortunately. So yeah. Um, yeah. Your thoughts, boys? Um, Obviously, I think Chase Team is going to do a job. Go on. Sorry. I, I think Teamless has made your team look a lot stronger, actually. I think um, it's played into your hands very well. I, You know what? And he, if he was your last player, I love it. Cooler has so much upside. Like, even on the weekend, what we saw from him, he looked like he could have exploded. And there was just a little couple of moments where they just caught him or something or just, just tackled him and stuff. Your backline's ridiculous. I think your backline's really, really good. It's quality. Apart from Talakai, 
don't like him. Right. Why are you a Talco hater? Needs to bro? go to the need needs to go to the bench bench forward role. Um, <laughs> but yeah, overall, I think that's a strong squad. And I think Jesse is looking at it, going, "Oh, I don't think I've got this in the bag as much." As I think hey. I no, I'm not that worried. But it is a good side. <laughs> Yeah, mm, I like okay. um I like Fodawake. I picked him up on Saturday too, so um that was a good pick. Yeah, Hughes mm. was an early take, obviously, but you've been able to just plug someone in there. Kami Kamika will do a job for you. Um, nothing too exciting, but yeah, McInnes obviously starting lock. Smithy's starting lock. Um, potentially we'll see how you know if Wong's got an injury for any sort of you know stretch of time, but mm. It started off looking pretty dire in your second row when you picked him, and it has, you know, it has kind of worked out for you in a way. Um, and then, yeah, the back line's good. So, team solid yeah. all, all one over. One critique. One critique for go. me. I just don't like Matt Burton third pick. I want to go back mm. to it. I just yeah. don't like it. Well, I, I mean, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We can't all pick Cody Walker <laughs> in the third round. <laughs> let I me, let get me... the attention off myself. Let me put it to you, Joel. If you had your time again, third pick, who would you have picked? Cody Walker or would you have picked Matt Burton? Cody Walker. Okay. He has just a bit more upside. Like the Bulldogs attack, I just don't like it at all. He's also got and a lot that's more you're downside. On. Oh, I don't know about that. Well, we don't know yet. Yeah, we don't know. <laughs> I've seen low. Matt Burton score some, <laughs> score some shit. Yep. Nah. I've seen games gonna... where Burton just I forgot he was even on the field. So at least Burton kicks. Burton's gonna go to center oh, in Burton, uh, round two and uh carve up. Yeah, Sexton will get his make his way back in. Mm. They'll have about seven centers to I... choose from. So why not? I think you've pulled off the smartest trade of the whole thing though as well. I think Trindle on your bench is absolutely sensational. Because mm. yeah. all it I takes did... is He'll still score quite good already, but if Hines goes down, like he would just mm. yeah. skyrocket I think points. For the trade bait, he's excellent because it's yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll put it out there. It's not even for trade bait. I did the exact same thing in me and Jesse's other draft league. I grabbed a solid backup for half and five eight. So I grabbed Brooks. Um, Brooks. Brooks was my backup in our other league. Um which is a great starter considering how many people are out here. So if, I'd say even Trindle is better than some of the guys that are starting, um, or he should be. He's probably mm. less proven. And then Kula has a lot of upside as well. So um, plus I can play him in my center wing. But um, yep. yeah. Yeah. Nice, nice insurance policy because there's fuck all depth. Yep. Yeah. 100%. But uh, um, should we smash through this last side? And, uh, yep. Get we'll knock bet. through the last one. Happy Coruscant. Um, Yeah, you know, we'll see what happens if he keeps it kicking. Not a bad pick in general. Um, yeah, Laurie got named. I thought he was going to be injured, so that he's in there. But, yeah, Alex Twall, I don't think he's going to get too much out of him off the bench in round two. So, uh, Big Tino, great pick. Josh King, not so much. He's, he's a prop now, so there's better upside in the two RFs. And, um, yeah, Ford's actually starting. I didn't think he was going to when he made that pick, but... He'll be happy with that. Uh, Jack Cogger and Luke Metcalf, the weakest halves pairing combo in the league. That's, that's what I was talking about before when I was talking about uh, Trindle <laughs> being better yep. than some of the starters. I think he's better than both those guys. Yeah. So Metcalf, pretty decent. I think he's going to do quite well with Sheck next to him. But Cogger's in the 14. So you don't want that from your starting halfback, which is you know traditionally your second highest scoring position outside of Cleary and Hines. So, um, yeah, not not happening there. But, yeah, he's got Greg Marzu. Hopefully makes up the difference. I don't think it's going to be enough. Uh, Semi Vellame not named. Brian Kelly, uh, is he going to start? I think he was – is yeah, he potentially – he's, he's center. Yeah, okay, I thought he was sick or something. But, yeah, he's in. Obviously, Dom Young's out for the week. Uh, and Nick Meany at fullback. So, I think, yeah, picking from last place, and he's probably going to stay there. With that side, unfortunately, uh, Damian Cook. He's got. He can only play one of them, so he may as well try and make something of it. Trade to get something sorted in his team, maybe a halfback. Uh, Nick Arima. Nick Arima's five eight, isn't he? Dual uh... position. He's got some unusual jewels. I'm not sure what they are. Um, he is hooker. Five eight fullback. 
Five eight and five eight. back. Yeah. So yeah. Oh, he has been of, hooker. Yeah. He has been hooker before. Yeah. So mm. you know, there's a chance he moves Meany up into the into the centers, takes Velame out, um, plays plays Nicarima at fullback. It's still not fantastic. He's got Dean Mariner too. It wasn't hey, too forwards. bad. Actually. Hey. He's got no forwards on his bench. He's got no forwards. He's also got no halves. Um, Tom Jenkins not named. Tristan Saylor not either. But yeah, there's not much happening, unfortunately. There's a lot of Nico hopeful Heineken. picks there that a lot of hopeful picks that didn't come off. So yeah, I feel like looking TLT at that side, has sucked him in the face. Mm. Yeah, he hasn't. Rough. He hasn't. He hasn't made any changes yet either. So okay, so you want to get on that? He's... Yeah, he's going to run out of waiver talent soon. He's also um, he's also got Damian Cook on his bench, and he's played Coruscant. So that's that's his auto emergency done. Yeah, I think I'm actually playing him this week personally. So yeah, he's got oh, oh wow, mate, I'm going to walk him. All right, all right, Joel, as as the commissioner, you need to you need to talk yeah. to this bloke because he's already giving away free free victories. So he started Dom yeah. Young. So Dom Young hasn't played. Um, he's Not still good. got Cogger in his side, and he's got Valame as well. So, yeah. yeah. We don't so, want someone losing interest before we've even started. What is going on there? Yeah. No. In the inaugural League of Interest draft, honestly. It's people no. And I have had – I've been inundated, one, so. inundated with people wanting to be part of things, and they got on too late. So – and that's a good yeah. uh, oh, just quickly, boys. Who's your your top three before we go? Shane. Mm, oh, I I'm just gonna throw three names out there just off the top of my head. Uh Shane, Jesse, Joel. There we go. <laughs> See you in the finals, boys. Yep. You know what? I don't hate that. I think um, yeah. I don't know if I'm hot or mid or biased. I like my side. Uh, Josh as a side actually surprised me with a with a bit going on there. To be fair, looking at it individually, breaking it apart, I actually think it's pretty decent. Um, Shane obviously side solid. Joel's pretty decent. Obviously, I don't like your halves as much, but I think you got a lot going on elsewhere. Um, but yeah, no, it's it's pretty spread out through the middle tier. But fuck, there's some there's some shockers throughout. So. <laughs> Um, yeah, we might see the ladder, you know, start to separate quite easily, I think. But, um, yeah, the three of us, look at us go. Elite drafters. <laughs> Solid. Oh, look at us go indeed. Uh, and that's all we've got time for, guys. That's the draft episode. That's how it's gone, the inaugural draft. As I said, I did have a fair few people reach out late. Uh, they did want to be part of things, which they missed the boat with. So there's already plans in place to make next year bigger and better than ever. So keep an eye on that. Obviously, down the track, there'll be some things spoken about, posted about about that. But again, as always, guys, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Uh, there will be some content out about the draft as we go throughout the year. So you'll be able to stay up to date with how things are going and, and the like. Um, and just let us know in the comments if you want the occasional maybe updated um, half an hour show or something. We can let you know how things are going with things as well every, I don't know, month or so. Um, but anyway, thank you for listening. We are off to bed because I believe it's pretty much midnight. So hope you all love it. That's a reason why I like this video. Give us some love and enjoy your night.